my name is Evandro. Uh, I'm an international cardiologist here in Brazil. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the KBC organizers for the kind invitation. It's a great pleasure to participate in this very special meeting. Okay. Without further delay, I'd like to start my talk, which is about techniques and advanced maneuvers for difficult side brain access. Um, I have no disclosures regarding this presentation. I would like to start highlighting the importance of the good pot technique, uh, which is crucial to open the struts across the side branch osteo, and this technique may facilitate side brain preservation. This is an example of how pot can help in open or reaccessing the side branch during verification PCI. This patient had a proximal LAD severe stenosis with a big septal involvement, and after the main vessel stenting, the the first septal went down and the patient starts complaining of chest pain and start to have tachycardia and we are not able to wire the first septal. Then we decide to perform the pot maneuver just close to the uh, to the septal that went down and after this maneuver we we could recover uh, the septal flow and reaccess and perform uh, balloon angioplasty and we got this nice result. These are these are the common problems that we find in such situations of steep angulated side branches. It's difficult to advance the wire in the opposite direction of the main branch because of the natural tendency of the wire to keep going towards the main branch. And as as we have more tortuosity and calcification, we have laws of torque response and laws of support due to high angulation and due to this proximal tortuosity. So the wires become not to respond well. So these are two important uh, wire bending wire shapes to access difficult and unrelated side branch, the double band curve and the progressive curve, as you can see here. So this is an example of uh, multivessel PCI. We start doing the RCA, which was CTO. And after that, we went for the left main and LED with diffuse disease. And we actually planned to, to work as fast as we can. It was the last case of the day. We start with provisional approach and we didn't put the wire on this diagonal branch. And what happened is, after standing from left main to LAD, we got a TM2 flow on the diagonal branch. We had no wire on it. And after a few minutes, uh, the flow was getting worse. And finally, we lost the side branch. The patient has ST elevation, chest pain, tachycardia. And what we did, we get, this is our approach for this kind of side branch acute occlusion. We start dealing with wires. We choose non-polymeric workhorse wires. Then we change for polymeric workhorse. Then we change to polymeric uh, tapered wires and some specialty wires. Uh, these are some options of these wires. We start with a regular three to four millimeter curve. This case was easily solved using the Boston fighter wire, which actually was very gently uh, manipulated to to seek the channel and through the struts and could easily wire and do balloon and angioplasty and restore. Uh, this is the final result with the flow restoration on the diagonal branch. These are um, some advanced solutions for side branch wiring in challenging anatomies that I would like to share with you. Some of them that may help in difficult situations. For the sake of time, I'll show a couple of these solutions for you. First of all, the use of double lumen catheters. Uh, in my country, in Brazil, there are two double lumen catheters available. The Sasuke from Asahi, which is a, a very uh, low profile double lumen catheter with uh, the side port very close to the tip. and. There's a different one called Twin Pass, Twin Pass from Teleflex, and this is a little bit bulky microcatheter, and the side port is a little bit far from the tip of the microcatheter. Example from a more complex case, a CTO case with distal cap involved bifurcation, and after the retrograde and bit bidirectional approach for recanalization, we had to deal with a bifurcation, and we did a, a mini crush, and we had a very difficult time to be right DIY through the side brain struts, and we used the Twin Pass double lumen catheter to with a whisper wire to access through the, the struts of the side branch and achieve a, re, a good uh, result. This is the important technique, the reverse wiring technique, which is very important to know it. Uh, it can help in some situations. These are the best uh, bifurcation angles with a Carina angle more than 90 degrees and the takeoff angle less than 90 degrees. This is the best scenario for the reverse wiring technique, uh, which consists in, in an advancement of the hairpin shape wire and with the gentle pullback, we do the reverse winding of the unweighted side branch. This is the classical description that was published in CCI in 2007, which the hairpin shaped wire is advanced through the through the tool key. Nowadays, we change it this technique for a new iteration, 
which is which call string line reverse wiring technique. And this, this is a very interesting technique. Uh, I wrote uh, something about it in this this article. You can see for this technique here. I'll show you that the, the main difference is that we found your hairpin shape inside the coronary tree. We don't need it to advance it uh, alongside the coronary. So this is an example of LED diagonal bifurcation calcified. We we try to advance it up. Uh, I was scattered, it won't cross, we did rotulation, and we start uh, the IBOS evaluation, a lot of calcium, uh, protruding to the lumen, some nodular calcium, and centric calcium, and we had uh, a hard time to wire the, the diagonal. Actually, we couldn't wire it with, with main wires in different shapes, and we had a uh, double lumen catheter to the system, and even with double lumen catheter, we could not uh, wire the side branch. So we changed it for the reverse wiring, string line, reverse wiring technique, which consists in, in Selecting a distal side branch, in this case a septal branch, and pushing and pushing the double lumen catheter to actually form the RP shape wire inside the coronary. And after that, with gentle movements of pullback, the double lumen catheter, we would engage the side branch ostium in the reverse fashion and proceed with the reverse wiring technique, which you can see here. Gentle, gentle movements and the wire goes in the side branch. And after that, side branch was secured. And we proceed with uh, double extending technique. In this case, it was a DK crush with some high boost optimization. We achieved a final, uh, this very nice result. And when nothing works, we have to think outside the box. This is an example of LED diagonal bifurcation, a very acute retroflex uh, angle of the side branch. We tried our best to manage it, uh, but we cannot wire the side branch during this acute and retroflex angulation. And after 30 minutes of attempts to wire main operators, main wires, main shapes of the wire reshaping, uh, we decided to move to a different technique. We use a, a non-conventional microcatheter, a microcatheter that is uh, used in neurology, neurointervention. So it's a shapeable microcatheter. We use a repeat can to shape this microcatheter. We, we didn't have the pre-shaped microcatheter like Supercross at that time. So we decided to shape our, our, our own microcatheter uh, with a very acute shape. We delivered the microcatheter with a work cost wire and we pull back the wire and, and we did some kind of very gentle micro catheterization of the side brain, like XP shape, father shape, we could engage the, the ostrom of the side branch and we gentle proceed with the wiring of the side branch. With, uh, this is echelon 10, microcatheter is the name of the microcatheter, this is a fielder FC wire, and the fielder just go very smoothly through the side branch, and we could advance the microcatheter and put uh, extra support wire, and we proceed with the double stenting with DK crush, and this is the final key scene balloon, and this is the final result. Thank you. Evandro? In the meantime, some comments from, from the panel. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, this was an excellent presentation. And uh, uh, maybe you can ask the panel uh, regarding uh, 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 this uh, strategy to access the side branch. I think uh, sometimes when the, uh, the side branch is very precious, then we can start with uh, wiring the side branch before we, uh, we, we do the main branch. And uh, uh, I don't know if uh, if the he prefers certain wires uh, when there is a very uh, very difficult access to side branch. Do you prefer? Uh, of course, we, we we had seen this initiative to use the microcat, but what is the kind of wires you are using? And uh, do you prefer to to uh, to wire the side branch before when it is a precious side branch? Okay. Tenemos conexión con Evandro, no? Evandro. Hello. Hey, Stoiki. Ah, ah. I can hear Hello. you. Hello. Thank you for, for Hello. participation. An another question from the audience. Another comment? If not, uh, from the panel. Yes. Uh, <coughs> just congratulations for the excellent presentation and for the very difficult cases that you, uh, you showed us. And uh, yeah, I especially love that uh, modified microcatheter technique and, uh, with the reverse wire. So I think we can use it afterwards, but it was an ex excellent uh, first. And also, what's very interesting is if you have a very complex uh, anatomy of the of the bifurcation, it's sometimes extremely tough to, to get a wire, no matter what kind of wire. And uh, you get started, and then after 30 minutes, you lose some of your patience. And after losing some of that patience, you, you have some different ideas that come from uh, different parts of your mind uh, that probably would not be normal. So congratulations for that, and and uh, also the reverse wire technique and or the hairpin uh, wire technique is always there. 
if you have some microcategory on the table, but so congratulations on an excellent presentation. Thank okay. you very much. Okay, Evandro, thank you. Uh, congratulations again, and we have to move to, to the next presentation. This is a uh, technique uh, effect uh, of wire gelling uh, at side branch in one stem strategy for coronary bifurcation lesion that is going to be presented by, by Beyong Keu Kim. Everyone, my name is Beyong Keu Kim from Yonsei University Severance Cardiovascular Hospital. Today is my talk is the effect of wire gelling in side branch and one stem strategy for coronary bifurcation lesions. This is my disclosure. Uh, let me start with the LAD diagonal bifurcation case. For the treatment of diffuse long LAD stenosis, two DS were implanted with overlapping. However, on angiograms, diagonal branch was occluded after stenting. We tried to uh, save diagonal branch from the start of the wiring to the joint diagonal branch, but finally failed. To protect a side branch during bifurcation PCI with one stand technique, numerous strategies has been developed on the basis of wire gelling. It is recommend like gelling wire technique in bifurcation PCI, but concerns still remain, particularly data regarding the impact of side branch gelling technique for a bifurcation PCI with one stand technique using second generation DES are limited. Uh, thus, we recently report the analysis regarding the role of wire gelling at the side branch and the major determining factor for side branch occlusion after stenting using the data of the COVID-3 registry. COVID-3 include patients with bifurcation undergoing PCI with the second generation DS implantation. From COVID-3 registries, a total of the 890 patients with bifurcation PCI using one stand technique were finally enrolled and classified into two groups according to whether they underwent wire gelling at the side branch, the wire gelling group and non-wire gelling group. To investigate the pure role of the side branch wiring in one stand strategy, current bifurcation reason requiring side branches such as the first is elective two stand technique, the second is a side branch predilation before stenting itself. A significant stenosis only a side branch without significant main vessel stenosis were excluded in the analysis. Primary endpoint was the occurrence of the final side branch occlusion after main vessel stenting. This is the comparison of the baseline characteristics between two groups. There were no significant difference. This is the angiographic and procedure characteristics of both groups. There was significant difference in the location and classification of bifurcation lesion. The wire gelling group compared with non wire gelling group had higher incidence of left main and true bifurcation, um, with a higher incidence of the heavy side branch classification or thrombus. DS type and the use of the IBUS were also significantly different. On the comparison of the QC data in the pre-procedure analysis, the wire zeling group had a shorter immediately greater diameter stenosis, longer lesion length of side branch, and shorter length of main vessel compared with the non-wire zeling group. In the post-procedure QCAs, there was no significant difference. When you look at the angiopic and procedural outcome, especially the occurrence of primary outcomes, the final side branch occlusion, there was no significant difference. In the instance of any overlapped side branch occlusion, also no difference. However, the instance of the side branch uh, flow restoration after overlapped occlusion were significantly higher in wire gelling group. Angiographic and procedure success were significantly different and there was no case of the broken wire in this study. Regarding the treatment of bifurcation lesion, the wire drilling group had a significantly higher rate of the final kissing balloon part, ballooning or stenting in the side branch and NC ballooning than did the non-wire drilling group. When analyzing the determinant of the for the uh, for final side branch occlusion after stenting, wire gelling and side branch were significant factor along with the greater pre procedure diameter stenosis of the uh, side branch main vessel and lesion length. 
In the analysis of the risk of for final side of branch occlusion in reason with significant predictors, the risk of occlusion progressively increased as the preprocessor dimeral stenosis of the side branch and main vessel and, and the main reason length increased. On our analysis, purposes of dimeral stenosis of side branch was 51%, main vessel was 60% and the reason length was 14 mm. When comparing the instance of the final side branch occlusion according to the stenosis and reason length, the reason with tight side branch and main vessel stenosis and long reason Long main vessel lesions show the highest instance of side branch occlusion among the subset. When comparing final uh, side branch occlusion according to the disease severity and wire drilling and side branching, although the, the instance of final occlusion after stenting in all patients were not significantly different between two groups, the wire drilling group had a significant low instance of final occlusion in the reason with preprocessor dimeral stenosis of side branch of greater than 60% or main vessel of greater than 60%. In the comparison of the uh, instance of final side branch occlusion according to the wire drilling at the side branch and the severity of the stenosis of side branch 1 main vessel, the wire drilling group had a significantly lower instance of final side branch occlusion in the reason with the preprocessor diameter stenosis uh, of the greater than 60% and main vessel of greater than 60%. However, the, among the other subset with preprocessor diameter stenosis of side branch less than 60% while main vessel of less than 60%, there was no significant difference in the instance of final side branch between the group. When you look at the clinical outcomes according to the wire drilling, there was no significant difference. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my uh, take home message. In overall uh, bifurcation reason treated with one stance strategy, wire drilling as side branches was not associated with reduced risk of the final side branch occlusion. That means the routine wire drilling as side branch does not need to be recommended. Wire drilling a side branch before main vessel stenting was a protective factor of, against the final side branch occlusion after main vessel stenting in one stent strategy, especially in the reason with the purposes of dimeral stenosis of the side branch is greater than 60%, main vessel greater than 60%. Wire drilling was significantly associated with low instance of final uh, side branch occlusion than non wire drilling. Uh, this suggests that the beneficial role of the of role of uh, wire drilling for specific lesion subset is the meaning the severe stenosis of both side branch and main vessel stenosis or true vacation uh, in the uh, wire uh, in stent strategy. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Kim, for your presentation. Uh, this is in, in, an, an interesting study with, uh, with the conclusion that seems to be changed our uh, routine clinical practice because we norma normally put uh, a wire at the side branch uh, disregarding the, the morphology and disregarding the, the severity of the stenosis because we know that in, in cases um, of pseudo bifurcation, uh, Medina XX0, but with a unfavorable morphology of the carina, the, the side branch can suffer a, a compromise. So we recommend in general the use of the gelet wire in all cases. I don't know if your study changed the, this paradigm. What do you think? Okay. So the, actually, the, uh, everybody knows uh, the, even if, if the, there was a severe stenosis or main vessel and side branch, everybody, the first we think the uh, wire jelly would be uh, required or not. But uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, we missed uh, this procedure and also the, there is uh, uh, quite relative with the final uh, balloon occlusion. So the, uh, from the data, so but the, before the uh, meaning of the <clears throat> 
uh, this study, so the, we should know the, I previously uh, told you, the, we should know the exact inclusion criteria. Uh, so in these studies, the side branch diameter is relatively large, in meaning the, the uh, diameter is 2.3, greater than 2.3, and also is all uh, bifurcation lesions requiring the side branch stamping or uh, predilation lesion is also uh, excluded. So, but the, uh, in the, uh, uh, the pure uh, true bifurcation lesions, is the definitely is the uh, wire gelling is uh, needed, but the uh, moderate or mild uh, side branch disease or uh, main vessel disease is uh, definitely routine wire gelling is not recommended. It is the, uh, our st study suggested. Okay, any question from the panel? Well, the side branch? and the angle of the side branch. Uh, do they affect the uh, final uh, uh, side branch occlusion? And uh, what about the outcome uh, in, in this uh, study? If the uh, angle is too so narrow is a, or it is yeah. too high? Yeah, it is a very good comment. And also, the, we uh, detailed analysis regarding the angulation of side branch. But the, uh, so from the data, uh, is uh, there was no significant difference. So maybe the, uh, some um, uh, acute angle or the uh, wide angles might affect the outcome, but uh, uh, in our study, is, uh, there was no significant difference according to the degree of the angulation. Can I have just one more comment also? You showed that there was a very high number of both uh, uh, groups, uh, so about 1,000 patients. And uh, you showed that there was a difference, uh, or was there any cutoff value for what you, or what the, it was left to the operator's discretion to put a GIAD wire into the side branch? Or was there any angulation uh, cutoff value, or was there any, uh, uh, I don't know, cas calcium score? Because there was a very high value of very high uh, degree of IVUS uh, being, being done for these patients. And also, I guess it was also uh, per performed for the, for the side branch. So we all know that the angle of the anatomy, the complexity, and then the, the severity of the, or the, the calcium score, they all uh, account for side branch occlusion. So was there any, because I, it wasn't just not clear for me at least to see that uh, was there any, any cutoff value for the operator to put a GIAD wire? Because there was a big difference in that, uh, in those groups. And uh, was there any IVUS, uh, uh, I don't know, recommendation? Or was there any IVUS value? Or was there any calcium score uh, measured, at least for all the patients uh, for the side branch? Because we all know that uh, there are very difficult, uh, uh, maybe, below 30 degrees or 60 degrees of the, of the angle of the side branch, and if you have a 2.5 millimeter vessel, and also if you have a long lesion uh, that, that's, uh, that's all five millimeter, more than five millimeter into the side branch, those are all, all factors that would, uh, would, uh, would uh, at least account for side branch occlusion. So was there any IVUS guidance for this or just uh, a feeling of the operator's discretion? Yeah, so actually, is the uh, uh, in this study is uh, we just analysis the the IBUS use or not, but uh, uh, when and how to use the IBUS for the uh, wire gelling is uh, there is uh, no exact data. So, but uh, you suggested some degree and also is the role of the IBUS for the uh, wire gelling or uh, wire rewiring is very important. Yes, in the future, so we should uh, investigate again. Thank you. Last question, by Carlos. Uh, thank sure, you very, please. <laughs> thank, thank you very much, uh, Professor Kim, for your for your uh, work. It's perfectly done. I think I, I just want to no, uh, note that there are other benefits uh, when uh, uh, passing the guide wire to the side branch besides uh, the acute occlusion of the side branch, which is uh, uh, shorter uh, times when when recrossing to the side branch, less radiation time when recrossing. So there are other benefits beyond this acute occlusion of the side branch mm -hmm. when doing uh, uh, the protection of the side branch. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever, um, I mean, uh, studied that? Uh, we, we did not check the, some procedure time related to this one, but uh, uh, as I previous show you, but uh, uh, 
optimization technique is an uh, old optimization technique is more frequently and more easily in wire jailing groups. So the, uh, you mentioned uh, some efficacy for this is, uh, for example, check time the, of the procedure time or radiation time. There is also very important, but in our analysis mm -hmm. was not included. Thierry, the last one. <laughs> no? Okay, we, we, we will discuss this topic in our next uh, EBC consensus. So we have to move to the next presentation uh, by Dr. Seyong Huang, and the, the, the title is Double Kissing Inflation Outside of the Stent. Hello, everyone. I'm honored to be here to introduce a modified gel balloon technique for coronary bifurcation lesion. I am Huang Zeyong from Zhongshan Hospital, Fudan University in China. As you know, provisional stenting is preferred for bifurcation lesion. And its key technique is by side branch protection. There are many protection techniques. The gelled balloon technique uh, is most accepted nowadays. Here is the illustration of gelled balloon technique, JBT. A uh, balloon while placed at the ashram or side branch may be, may be active or passive uh, when the uh, stent put in the main vessel. Then the balloon was removed and post dilation was performed. Generally speaking, the JBT jet balloon technique is very, very effective. However, sometimes side, bran side branch occlusion will occur, most in two circumstances. The first is at stage of post dilation. The second stage is side branch rewiring. Here is a case of side branch occlusion and post dilation. As you see, the marginal branch is open during the passive protection. However, after post dilation, the marginal branch was totally occluded. And here is another case of side branch occlusion caused by the wiring. The diagonal was open during its active protection. However, during its rewiring, the diagonal branch is dissected and accruted. The JBT is very effective. However, side branch accrusion can also occur um, due to post dilation because post dilation can cause prog shift, can cause carina shift, and prog dissection. So how to do, how to deal with this residual risk of side branch occlusion? We should protect side branch persistently, persistently, not only at the stage of the um, stenting stage, but also at the stage of post dilation. During post dilation, the uh, the gel balloon should remain at the side branch. And this consistent the second time of kissing balloon. And so we, pro we proposed the modified technique, namely DKO, double kissing inflation, as I understand. There are two types of kissing balloon the first is the kissing between the stent balloon and gel balloon. And the second kissing is between the post dilation balloon and the uh, gel balloon. Now let's see a case. Here is a bifurcation of the LAD and the diagonal. The di diagonal is very large and very important. So we adopted the KO technique to protect it. Firstly, 
we dilate, predilate the LAD and uh, diagonal. Then we protestant in LAD while active protecting the diagonal. This is the first time of kissing, the kissing between the stent broom and the gelled broom. Then we remove the uh, stent broom. Uh, we advance a uh, post dilation broom and post dilate the distal stent, and then the post dilate dilation balloon and the gelled balloon was inflated simultaneously. This is the second kissing. The second kissing is between the gelled balloon and post dilation balloon. After the second time kissing, the gelled balloon was finally carefully removed. Pot was performed. Another stent in the approximate LAD and LAM. Here is a final angiogram showed good result. And to examine the ostium of the diagonal, we perform OCT both from LAD and diagonal. Uh, from here, we can see the diagonal the diameter of diagonal ostium is about 1.9 millimeter. And so there are three key steps of DKO technique. The first is the first kissing, the second kissing, and the POT. The difference between the DKO technique and the traditional JBT technique is the second kissing. The DKO technique have the second kissing. The kissing between the post dilation balloon and the and the gelled balloon. And here is tips of detail technique. And uh, between the two time kissing, the side branch balloon can either inflated or deflated. Inflation or deflation both are okay. The, at the stage of the second kissing, the overlap of the of the uh, post dilation balloon should be least should be least or minimal. This can facilitate the removal of the gelled balloon. At stage of pot, the distal end of balloon should not exceed the ostium of side branch. So we think DKO may protect side branch better than JBT for bipartition lesion, and RCT is warranted to confirm its benefit. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Comments from the panel? You do double kissing, jailing, and yes. then at the end, you do pot for proximal part because you want to reduce malaposition on proximal yes. part. Yes. But then this doesn't reopen the yes. struts in front of the ostium of side branch. So it's just to keep open the side branch without real kissing main branch, side branch. Because if you do a pot, is a kind of pot without kissing. Is this true? Uh, we should do pot. Uh, in every patient, but the uh, the position should be uh, precisely positioned and uh, should not exceed the ostium of the side branch. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Is there any concern that uh, some stent deformation may happen with this balloon inflated, and also some concern that this gel balloon may not be we are not able to extract it out if uh, uh, if the main branch stent was uh, was already fully inflated. So uh, this may need a certain experience, experience in hand. Otherwise, it will end up with a problem. Now you mean the difficulty of the uh, pull yeah. out of the, the gel balloon? 
yeah, the removal and also stent deformation of the main stent with this balloon inflated. Uh, did you have IVOS and uh, yeah, OCT had made sure that there is no stent deformation in spite of this side branch? And so if, if you are using a bigger balloon, the side branch is, is a little bit bigger. So uh, are you sure that there is no stent deformation? Yeah, uh, half the pot, half the pot at the proximal part of the uh, main vessel. And there is no obvious um, deformation in, in the proximal part of the stem. Thank you. We have to so move. The pot is, yeah, is in front of it. Okay. Thank you. We have to move for the next presentation by Dr. Thank Boateng uh, on the same topic active versus conventional side branch protection strategy for coronary bifurcation lesion, please. Distinguished professors and colleagues, good afternoon. I'm Zhengbo from Peking University First Hospital. Today, I'd like to talk about active side branch protection strategy in coronary bifurcation lesion treatments. And I have no conflict of interest to disclose. According to the current guideline, provisional set branch setting strategy is a first-line recommendation for most of coronary bifurcation lesion. One stand strategy could avoid complex procedure, long procedure time, multiple metallic stress accumulation at the site of bifurcation. However, the provisional strategy might face some challenges, especially when the bifurcation anatomy is a little bit complex. Several potential mechanisms could lead to increased risk of cell branch compromise, such as plaque shift, thrombosis, dissection, and extended hematoma. Therefore, the prediction of cell branch occlusion is getting more and more crucial. In 2015, Professor Do Kofei presented an interesting investigation to build up an QCA-based angiographic tool for risk prediction of cell branch occlusion in coronary bifurcation intervention. And in 2016, the same investigation group present a simplified version V result score with visual estimation and full parameters, pre-procedural diameter stenosis of the bifurcation core, bifurcation angle, diameter ratio between main vessel and set branch, and diameter stenosis of the set branch before main vessel stenting. The V result score greater than or equal to 12 points represent high risk of cell branch occlusion. However, the concern is raised that in this study, the majority of the cell branch occluded did not have a protection wire placed at baseline. And a simple wire placement could help to restore normal flow and avoid cell branch occlusion. And this concept is further validated by recent published data from a CREA in 1,890 uh, patients with bifurcation lesion who underwent the uh, one stand strategy were uh, classified into two groups according to the use of side branch wild jailing. And after multivariable regression analysis, wild jailing is a protective factor of the side branch compromise especially in main vessel stenosis greater than 60% before stenting. However, if we look at the absolute number, even we perform wire jailing, the incidence of the cell branch occlusion is still high when main vessel is relatively severe disease. Therefore, uh, we should figure out some other effective approaches to protect that branch when the anatomy of bifurcation lesion is more complex. So far, we have some several options to do active cell branch protection, uh, including jailed balloon technique and balloon stand kissing technique, jailed microcaster technique, and even two stand strategy. And in CIT Resolve, a uh, trial, the investigators tried to compare the active cell branch protection versus conventional approach in reducing cell branch occlusion in high-risk bifurcation treatment, defined as V resolve score greater than or equal to 12 points. And the active cell branch protection included elective to stand strategy for large cell branches and jailed balloon technique for small cell branch. And the eventual approach was 
um, provisional standing for large set, uh, set branch and jailed wire technique for small set branch. Finally, and the patient in the active set branch protection group have a significant lower rate of set branch occlusion. And to further comprehensive investigate the difference between active and conventional set branch uh, protection strategy for uh, coronary bifurcation lesion, we conducted a meta analysis and 1,174 patients from four retinal control clinical trial and one observational study were included. And the majority of the patients have two bifurcation lesion, and the active protection strategy included jailed bloom, BSKT, jailed cool cell technique, as well as elective two stand strategy. And the control group was jailed wire technique. And the endpoint is included cell branch occlusion, a decrease in TV flow grade in cell branch, absence of blood flow in cell branch, uh, poor procedural myocardial infarction, and the long-term maze. And the cell branch occlusion was defined as any decrease in the TV flow grade immediate after the main vessel stand implantation. And after analysis, we can see active cell branch protection could decrease the risk of cell branch occlusion, but not absence of the TME flow and the side branch. And for per procedural myocardial infarction and long-term maze, the difference between the two groups was not significant. And although the current meta-analysis have several limitations, and there is still indication that acting set branch uh, protection approach may have to reduce the set branch uh, compromise in bifurcation lesion treatment. And the active set branch protection provides more chances to restore flow when set branch occlusion occur after main vessel standing, especially by a jade undersized balloon and with appropriate inflation pressure when necessary. It could have to facilitate rewiring uh, the set branch to perform further provisional procedure. However, while we do active set branch protection, we should be cautious when jail device trapped in severely angled and calcified bifurcation region and increase the risk of main vessel stand deformation and other um, acute complications. And routine active set branch protection could be time consuming and increase the medical cost and it might only be applied for patients with high-risk bifurcation lesion. And in summary, cell branch protection strategy depends on carefully uh, pre-assessment for uh, before PCI. Complex bifurcation with high risk of cell branch occlusion needs more active cell branch protection. And further investigations are needed to validate the value of active cell branch protection in large-scale clinical trials. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Seng. Uh, my question is, in your clinical practice, uh, in, what, in which percentage of bifurcation lesion do you perform ac active uh, con, um, side branch protection instead of put the conventional jailed wire? The proportion. Uh, okay, thank you for your uh, question. It is very important and for uh, the uh, bifurcation lesion PCI, in my opinion, maybe 20 to 30 percent of patients we have to perform active set branch protection strategy. And if we look at the CIT resolve and if the, the, uh, the V resolves for greater than we put to 12 points if the angle is larger and the uh, pre uh, dilation the stenosis of both side branch or main vessel is great or even maybe uh, 60 to 70 percent and uh, we we have to uh, do more active protection to avoid uh, some acute occlusion complication and if there uh, it, it, it's a not a complex one, I think just a well drilling or even uh, just a, uh, do the one stand strategy is enough. I think. Okay. Sorry, I, if uh, I can ask, 
Sorry. Yes, 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 high proportion. How, so, yes, 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 please. How much is the how much is the percentage of double stenting kissing in this by by starting of the, the study? Because this is very important. We we have already many study done by Shaolian Chen and other study in Europe that when is complex by definition two or more the side branch. If you use a double stenting technique, you have better result. When it's short, also EBC main, we know already that is best the provisional. So for me, which is the percentage of in your study of double stenting kissing? And another thing, how many are double stenting bailout? And these are how are accounted in which group? are accounted that double stenting so complex main branch protection or just fail simple protection. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your question. And in my uh, meta-analysis, only one clinical trial is just a CIT resolve have the, uh, I mean, active side branch protection involves two stem strategies, only one. And if you look at the subgroup analysis, the difference, I mean, between active versus conventional, the difference significant is not driven by the big uh, set branch using two standard strategy and versus uh, I mean, maybe jailed bloom strategy. Because the, only, the most uh, difference is driven by some small set branch protection. It's only um, jailed, uh, wire technique versus gel bloom uh, technique. So I think the percent of the two stand strategy is not dominant. I think for the, um, I mean, in, in, in this meta-analysis, the most active protection uh, for the set branch is just a, a gel wire and a gel bloom. It's not the two stand strategy. And I think uh, in the clinical practice in China, I think more and more uh, bifurcation PCI is not double kissing or any two stand strategy. And the provisional strategy is the dominant one. I think more and more. Okay. Uh, comments for the, from the panel? Question? Just uh, one comment. Uh. Uh, I think uh, we must agree with that that uh, there is uh, if there is less stents uh, put in, in patients, then probably that's better for the long term. But uh, we also have to take into consideration that uh, if upfront uh, two stent strategy is planned, that is because that's a very high risk uh, and very complex uh, bifurcation lesion. Or you don't have time, or as we just discussed before, that there are some credentials, or then, 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 then some parts of the, uh, the of the of the bifurcation that you would not like to lose, or either the main branch or the side branch. So I couldn't agree more uh, that uh, that uh, we need to we need to divide the the those patients into different groups of uh, potential uh, loss of side branch or even. The main branch. So we have to have, or maybe it would be better to have some some values or maybe IVUS or OCT criteria for just guiding uh, the treatment or the treatment plan for the for the bifurcation. Uh, that would that would be very good. Okay, we have to move to to the next presentation. The Cepal technique, a novel technique for uh, Angel side branch guideway that will be presented by Carlos Uribe. Thank you very much. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, thanks a lot for having invited me. So the, the uh, presentation that I'm going to give is about uh, an old technique, a new, a new, a novel use for an old technique uh, for uh, uh, guide wires. So the, the, the sepal technique is, a, is, a, is an old technique uh, described for treating osteolesion in 2011, also known, uh, also known as the floating wire technique. Uh, most of you know that name, and uh, uh, what what we uh, what we have found is that 
despite this technique, is, is useful for uh, placing st osteal stents. Uh, we found that we can use this uh, same technique for uh, preventing the deep guide catheter uh, intuition when proximal stents uh, uh, are, are placed, and especially when, when we uh, need to, to retrieve the guide wires, when we need to pull the guide wires. So, uh, as I mentioned to you before, this, is, this, uh, this technique uh, was, uh, was intended for only a precise osteal uh, treatment uh, for precise stent uh, uh, deliver, delivery uh, of, of, uh, of, uh, stent, of the stent. As you can see here uh, in this uh, demonstration of a, of a uh, osteal lesion of the left main, uh, and this is in the, in the, in the, in the other uh, graphic, you can see the intended use for this technique, which was only for a more precise placing of the stent. But as I, uh, this is the, the first uh, uh, description of this technique, which is called sepal wire technique. This technique, as I show you before, I forgot to, to explain that to you, is to place a, a, an additional guide wire floating in the in the aorta, while the 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 two guide wires are uh, are in place in the coronary tree. So uh, the, the, this technique was uh, uh, described uh, in 2011. This is the the first uh, uh, description of this technique. Um, and as was, as I mentioned before, was intended only for precise um, osteal positioning, uh, and this is the uh, uh, the result of of, of the uh, 2014 analysis uh, showing that this uh, technique is is uh, well is 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 a proper technique for osteal positioning for osteal lesions. However, uh, as I uh, we, we, we found that this technique is also very useful for retrieving uh, guide wires uh, which are uh, trapped uh, or jailed when we uh, put a stent, as, as I depicted here in this uh, horrible graphic that I made. I'm, I'm very terrible at uh, drawing, you know, excuse me for that. But uh, the, the idea is, is that this, um, um, there are three guide wires, two, one, one which is trapped, uh, our pinned between the uh, artery and the uh, uh, stent, and is the the jailed uh, guide wire. The other one is the the main uh, vessel guide wire, and the other one is the the sepal guide wire. So the idea is, if you it, it, it helps when you uh, pull uh, through the guide wire, even though we were we 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 have thought in in our residency that if you keep uh, uh, tension in the guide wire, you you manage to avoid to get the, the, the guide cutter sucked in in the in the in the in the artery. However, there are sometimes uh, places where where this is not uh, so secure, and you end up going with the guide with the guide cutter going deep and damaging the stent and damaging the proximal part of the stent, or even dissecting the left main, or even going very deep inside uh, deep into the the uh, artery and causing damage. So uh, with this technique, we've, we, we have found that the, the, the uh, guide catheter prevents to be sucked in and is, 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 it's, it is uh, very well positioned in that way and it's very stable and avoids, avoids the, the catheter to get sucked in when we try to pull the, the jail guide wire in the side branch. So we recommend, we re we recommend a third guide wire uh, we recommend uh, along the way, we have found that the, doing it with, a, with a, a extra rail uh, guide wires is better. Uh, for example, the Grand Slam guide wire or the extra uh, support uh, guide wire uh, uh, because of, of the pulling force and the, con the, con the uh, uh, contrary force that the uh, guide cutter placed on, on this uh, Place so it's better to to have a a, a better rail uh, 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 guide wire. So uh, uh, th there's there's definitely a need for better control and safety when on jailing side branch guide wire, especially uh, uh, in the in the uh, techniques that we're using today, where the pot is a is a, a, a required step today. 
and uh, uh, which which place uh, which pin harder the guide wire uh, to the vessel wall. And this is particularly true for calcific bifurcations where pulling force um, for for angling the guide wire might be excessive. So this is the case number one uh, that I'm going to show you. We have performed 34 cases by now, uh, and we are planning to do a, a publication ongoing. And as you can see in the in the uh, let me see, uh, show you again in the second uh, larger, you can see that we are pulled. The guide gets uh, uh, still there without uh, moving uh, inward. This is another example. As you can see, uh, the, the catheter tries to get sucked into the artery. However, the, the third uh, uh, floating wire avoids uh, these uh, um, this, uh, the catheter to go uh, uh, further into the artery. So this is the final um, result showing you that the uh, left main is, 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 uh, is with no damage and the other places of the artery is, is with no damage at all. So the, this, uh, for, from our experience, this uh, uh, technique has been shown to be uh, uh, safe. Uh, this is a case where we have a transient prolapse of the guide wire of the floating wire uh, let me show you again. As you can see, there's uh, there the, the 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 floating wire get it, uh, get got into the artery. However, these uh, these have no uh, complications. As you can see here in this final and the final result is 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 great. Um, this is another case. This is our fourth case done. And as you can see here, is we are now trying to pull. And, and the, 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 the uh, guide gets uh, perfectly well seated there in the aorta. And there is no damage after all in the final place. This is another case. And as you can see, again, we, we are pulling, uh, uh, pulling traction. And the third guide wire, as you can see here, uh, here the, the third guide wire is, is doing his job. Uh, this is another case, and uh, this is the final uh, result, uh, excuse me, and this is the, uh, the uh, depiction uh, of a stem boost showing the stent which is not, uh, which is uh, indemned and not touched by the uh, tip of the guy wear. This is a left main, a, a left main case that we have done. Uh, this is the left main case, also perfectly done with this technique. And this is the final result showing you that the stent is perfectly placed with no distortion whatsoever. Um, this is the, the, uh, the final result and the stem boost of the technique showing that there is no interaction between the guide and the proximal part of the stent. This is the final case that, that, that I'm going to show you. This is a two bifurcation that I have done in one patient. This is the uh, technique again in action, uh, okay. The, uh, in this in this case, we have uh, uh, we only have two wires. We learn along the way that it's better to have three wires. Uh, we did this case only with two wires, but the idea is to have three wires in order to avoid this. What happens? What what did just happen? Which is you lose the uh, the proper um, um, place for the guide into the into the proximal part of, of the left main. So it's better to have another guide wire into it. This is the, the, uh, the, the circulation of the patients. And again, showing you that there is no uh, interaction. This is the final result, which is uh, show that there are, there are no complications with this technique. So the, as a conclusion, CEPAL technique uh, provides a safer and controlled way to on jail side branch in, uh, guide wires. Easy to perform, cheap and reproducible. Avoids, avoids uh, unintended, uncontrolled deep guide cutter intubation and, and, and its related complications, let's say dissection, longitudinal stent compression and distortions. Uh, and a, a paper describing this particular novel use in bifurcation under submission and a registry is underway to prove that the use of sepal of is, is safe. Thank you very much. If I can say something. Uh, of course, this technique is more important when uh, main proximal branch is in, of the same diameter or not 
too big of the main distal branch because otherwise the difference between is uh, make less danger on the jailing of the side branch. So maybe it's more useful when after pot yeah. than before uh, pot. This is my comment. Yes, we are usually, we, 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 what we usually do is to retrieve the, the, the jail guy what after pot, you know, and not before pot. Because, because we, we, what, we, what we do is, 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 the, is to have the, uh, the uh, side branch guy wire as a, as a marker for the other guide wire, you know. So, yeah. Carlos, uh, do you use this technique in, in all cases of... Uh, of jailed uh, wire or, or only in a provisional way when you note uh, some resistance to the retriever? Mm -hmm. When we know some resistance, definitely. Mm -hmm. Hi, Car Carlos, thank you for the presentation. Did you ever think about just using the 035 wire instead of taking a third guide wire to, to just place the 035 wire from the, that you've on the table and use that as a as a as a wire in the in the sign in the in the in the sinus because it'll give you more support and yeah. will allow you to back up your guide more. Yeah, you can do it with also a, 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 with an O thirty five guide wire. Let's say an hydrophilic uh, standard guide wire for radial approach. You can do it, but you know you you, you are with a with a uh, going through a six frame, so it's it's not so easy to pass uh, a zero thirty five. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, this technique it appears that it, it uh, stabilizes the guide the guiding cat more and uh, uh, jailing is easier. But what happens in in the very complex cases uh, when you are doing like the crash and uh, you have uh, so many uh, repeated inflations? Did you encounter some difficulty in having uh, a third wire with this all uh, with all these equipments inside? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's one of the issues. I mean, what, that's one of the issues. But but as long as I mean, if if you if you are working with a with an old 14 guide wire, it's no problem at all to have a to have a fourth uh, uh, inside the guide. So you know, it, you know, it's 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 you know, it's a balance. You know, but but for me, it's better to have safety. I mean, it's to have better to have better control and no and no end up with a with a with a longitudinal extent distortion in complex cases, you know, especially with, with uh, left mains, uh, proximal left mains or, or, or distal left mains. Just, just one more uh, question. We, uh, we, 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 we have it, not, uh, please, very short. No, no, short, short question. Just one question. Answer, was there after pot uh, leaving the wire in jail, was, did you experience any breakage of the wire or just losing part of the wire in the, in the side branch? That's just one part of the question. And did you consider using hydrophilic wires that's easier to pull back uh, even without the third guide wire? Okay, yeah, the, the reason that we, that we put the, we, we leave the guide wire uh, in uh, when, we, we, when we do pot is because the pot allows you to have a better cell, you know, the, the cell of the side, the cell, one of the cells of, of, of the stents get better protruded to the side. So it's better to, for, for you to recross after the pot, recrossing guy was after the pot, you know. So, so for me, is is always the standard technique to leave the the side branch uh, uh, and, and and leave it after the pot, because if we are thinking and maybe recrossing, it's better for me if I have pot and then doing the recross, knowing that 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 I, that I have done pot and the the struts are are now placing more. Uh, uh, through the side branch, you know. So, so a standard for me is is to retrieve the guy what after the pot, to retrieve the jail guy what after the pot. This is the standard procedure for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Carlo, and congratulations for your presentation. For the next, uh, is for me a pleasure to introduce the next speaker. This is Yoshi Kinoshita. He's a friend, uh, a great operator. He, he was in Cordoba in our center last week performing an incredible case, very complex, with success. And, and he, he's going to, to talk about the, about the real JAP technique, solution for cyber occlusion. Yes.
Thank you, Manuel, and uh, thank you, ABC members. Today, uh, I would like to talk about the new better technique for the uh, side branch compromise. Uh, this is my NCO slide. And uh, uh, although the, uh, we usually follow the keep it open concept for the side branch tendencies, but um, some kind of intervention to side branch is necessary in advance for a region uh, where uh, side branch compromise is anticipated during the treatment of the main branch. In such cases, dissection may occur in the side branch ostium, uh, which may cause difficulty in recrossing the wire. The, uh, sorry. Hmm. The uh, real job technique, uh, which means uh, rewiring the, uh, to the dissected side branch along the gel balloon, is a technique to ensure that, uh, that the wire passes into the uh, dissected side branch. Okay, this is uh, my, my first case. First case is the 80s male and the uh, every DCTO region. Uh, after passing, the, uh, this, uh, this operator is uh, my young colleague, and he passed the wire and uh, uh, put the stent from the mid part to the distal ready, and uh, he direct the first diagonal uh, branch with two balloon to avoid its obstruction after the stenting in the main branch. And then uh, he put the stent and, uh, uh, at the proximal ready using the uh, gel balloon. Uh, because uh, he tried to avoid the side branch. And after uh, removing the gel balloon, take the gel balloon, uh, he could not, uh, he tried to recross the wire to the side branch, but he couldn't do that uh, due to uh, maybe dissection of the side of branch or two. And uh, in this uh, in this situation, operator uh, chained to uh, chain to me, and uh, uh, I try to uh, advance the wire into the side of branch. But uh, in the same situation occurred, I could not uh, pass the wire because the, uh, in my feel, in my tactical uh, feeling of the wire, the, that there is a very very uh, I feel the very very big dissection. So. Uh, I'm, uh, we are stuck and I'm in trouble, but uh, I, mm, at that time I came with a new uh, idea, I uh, came with a new idea for me. And uh, so uh, once again, I uh, insert the uh, barrel outside from the uh, this tent uh, using by the, this protection wire. But at that time uh, I felt a little bit uh, resistance because of the distent, implanted distent. So uh, certainly I use the anger baron technique. Uh, using by the anger baron technique, it is easy to advance the wire to the, uh, this side branch. And, uh, uh, and, uh, I, uh, and then I uh, direct the, this side uh, this balloon, uh, this two balloon again. And, uh, uh, and in, this, uh, in this condition, I advance another wire. Uh, Another wire, and, and the, uh, this wire, uh, the, I uh, pressed another wire from the main branch uh, in the contact with uh, uh, direct the balloon and uh, advanced the wire uh, into the diagonal branch by running uh, it along the surface of the balloon. And the, uh, immediately after balloon direction. Can, okay, this one. After balloon direction, uh, def deflation, yes, I advanced the wire uh, just uh, uh, so like a stripping on the surface of the balloon casita. So I can get the, uh, this, uh, so dissected, I, 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 get, I can pass the wire uh, into the, through the dis dissected uh, uh, side branch of steam. Yeah, and uh, finally, uh, I do the uh, drug eating balloon at the, uh, the uh, ostium of the di diagonal branch. And the uh, uh, final kissing balloon also I performed. And this is the final result. Uh, this case, uh, this sec uh, second case is uh, 80 female. Uh, this, uh, she had, uh, as, as you can see, uh, already another. Uh, Severe stenosis in the LAD and at the LAD and diagonal, uh, first diagonal bifurcation uh, 011, uh, like this. Yes, and uh, in this case, uh, the, uh, so the diagonal, it, it's a little bit difficult to see, but this is uh, very, very, this was, there is a very, very severe calcified region around this bifurcation. 
So uh, the, in this case, I thought that the, when I put the stent in the main branch, the carinus to maybe occur, the carinus to maybe the uh, this uh, diagonal branch uh, occurred. So first, I uh, dilate the this diagonal, but as you can see, the this diagonal, the stent to the this diagonal, the little bit of uh, little bit stiff because of calcified crack, uh, but. After the uh, removed indentation, uh, as you can see, uh, we can see the a uh, little bit uh, small dissection here. So uh, in this case, also I use the gel baron technique and uh, put the stent in the left uh, put in the LED. And in this case, I uh, uh, I didn't uh, I didn't uh, pull out the uh, this gel uh, balloon. Uh, I pressed this uh, this gel uh, this gel balloon, and then uh, as I uh, as I performed the before case, the just a moment, yes, uh, after the deflation of the balloon, I advanced a wire along the uh, along the this balloon surface. Yep. So the, it is easy to uh, advance a wire. And this is the final result. The, as you can see, the, also this case also I used the drug coating balloon in the diagonal branch of stew. And, the final, and also I add the uh, final kissing balloon. As you can see, the, uh, there is a little bit the, uh, this section at the side of branch of stew, but we can, uh, keep the, we can keep the timid tree flow in this case also. Yep. So once a uh, dissection occurs in the side of branch or stem, uh, the wire is often trapped in the dissection space and may not recross, uh, recross successfully. And in this situation, stent are uh, further restrict to the behavior of the wire and may uh, make it more difficult to recross the wire into the side branch. The principle of the real, real job technique is to close the dissected space and temporarily dilate it, the uh, true room by the dilation balloon, and uh, to advance the wire along the surface of the balloon uh, for the uh, room to wire navigation. This is a uh, very similar with the reverse car technique in the city region. Yep. So uh, this is my conclusion. Uh, this technique is useful uh, in the treatment of true bifurcation region when they cross the wires in complex situations where there is a potential for side branch occlusion. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, Yoshi. Questions? Just one comment. I think sometimes it's uh, it's a good. It could be a good technique, but you have to be lucky to perform that. But. Uh, we have to consider putting stents in dissected uh, side branches. But that's, that's just one comment that I would be afraid that uh, for the long term that the side branch would be kept open, uh, leaving such a dissection in both cases. Yes, thank you for your uh, comment and question. Uh, in this, uh, until now, the, we, uh, we usually use the DCB after the uh, dissection of the uh, the uh, side of branch of stream. And uh, many side branches you can keep it. You can keep it. What type of wire do you use to, to, to recross with the balloon? Do you use a, a workhorse wire or like a Gaia type wire when you're trying to no, puncture no, no, back no, no, in? No, no, no. Second, uh, usually we use uh, the uh, Sion Black as a second wire. Okay. Uh, I, I recommend you, if you want to use this technique, the yeah. uh, Puma Jacket wire is better. Polymer jacket covered wire, like a Sion Blue, or if the you feel some resistance stiffness at that time, uh, uh, Gradius is a better. And it's going to present by Singhini Biswas. It's a, a case of a, a rupture of a, a jelly side branch. My name is Dr. Sanjini Biswas. I'm an interventional cardiologist at the Bristol Heart Institute in the UK. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity to present uh, this case today, which I've titled Getting Out of Jail, but Not in One Piece. This is a case of a 67-year-old gentleman who presented to our institution with an anterior STEMI. He had minimal cardiac risk factors. And in STEMIs, I usually take a shot of the non coagulant vessel first, which is shown here, and that shows a large dominant RCA that has minimal disease. On taking shots of his left system with an EBU35 guide, it was clear that he had a severe ostal circumflex lesion. But it was actually his LAD 
that was the culprit vessel was from this evidence at the level of the diagonal branch. And after wiring with a cyan blue and pre-dilatation, I deployed a 3O by 24 synergy stent in the proximal to middle AD, the results shown here. After post-dilating the stent with 3-5 and 4 RNC balloons, I then undertook intravascular imaging with IVIS to make an assessment of the acute stent result and ass assessing the LAD ostium for future procedural planning. This actually shows relative freedom of disease of the ostium of the LAD and a reasonable acute stent result in the mid-LAD. Given that treating the ostial circumflex would necessitate stenting back to the left main, I decided to stop at this stage and to discuss him at the MDT, where it was felt that with isolated osteal circumflex disease, it was reasonable to treat this lesion percutaneously rather than with a surgical revascularization strategy. So I arranged for him to come back two days later with a plan to do, undertake a layered provisional strategy to treat his left main into the circumflex and then to consider reopening the struts into the LAD at the end. So I took a seven French EBU35 guide, wired the cyan, uh, circumflex with a cyan blue and the LAD with a turn track wire which are the two main workhorse wires which we have in our lab here. After pre-dilatation to create some space, I undertook an IBIS assessment of the left main for the circumflex. You can see here that the left main is quite large at four and a half to five millimeters, and the proximal circumflex itself is quite big at four millimeters. I haven't shown you the IBIS of the lesion itself, but it showed a soft plaque with no significant calcification. So I took a 40 by 16 megatron stent for purposes of its radial strength uh, from the left main to the circumflex. Ivis shows the uh, left main ostium is healthy, and so we purposely chose not to extend the stent back to the ostium. And so this is the immediate post-stent result where the LED ostium appears pinched, and so the plan was to rewire into the LED, open the struts, and do a kissing balloon inflation. But before doing that, uh, to un overcome the differential in size between the circumflex and the left main, I did a pot on the left main with a 4-5 NC balloon, and on this clear stent image, you can see the interventional wire the pot balloon is on and the wire that is jailed into the LED lying under the stent. So at this point I took a fresh cyan blue wire to rewire into the LED through the Megatron stent and then wanted to take the jailed wire out. However, on pulling the jailed wire, I couldn't feel any resistance, I wasn't pulling hard, and the wire was coming back out of the TUI, but I couldn't see the turn track tip move back on the screen. So my immediate worry was that I'd damaged the wire and that it was perhaps unraveling, and so I called for help with the colleague. We then scrubbed in. Took a 1 0 sapphire balloon down the wire uh, with a view to burying it under the stent and pulling the whole thing out as a single unit. But what became completely apparent was that as Tom pulled more, this came out. And essentially, the wire outside the body was detached to the segment of wire in the coronal. So, what do we have now? We know we have a stent in the circumflex back to the left main and an interventional wire. We know we have a jailed wire behind the stent into the LAD that's broken somewhere, but what we don't know is where it is fractured. Has it done it somewhere back in the guide, like option A? Do we have a wire that's fractured at the point of the edge of the stent? Do we have a wire where the back end is hanging somewhere in the aorta? Or do we have a wire embedded deep somewhere behind the stent that just extends out to the distal vessel? And the next question then is how has the wire fractured? Is it a sharp fractured end? Is it a single filament that's coming out? Or do we have multiple filaments coming out of the wire? And so it is this point where imaging was very useful. And you can see some incredible images of these multiple filaments just sitting in the lumen of the vessel on this ibis. And moreover, when we came to withdraw the ibis catheter, it becomes evident that the ibis catheter has managed to extract quite a lot of this material. So it's all caught up in the V angle between the ibis monorail and the guide wire. We pulled all of these filamentous material out. And so we did that a few times, and every time the repeat IBIS images showed fewer and fewer filaments. And every time we got out all this hair-like material caught between the IBIS and the wire. And so we thought that's a win. Um, and then we did the IBIS again. And I've truncated the run, but hopefully you can see that there are still some filaments in the left main. And filaments going back into the guide, which I've just highlighted here. So now we have confirmation that the wire has definitely fractured somewhere in the guide. What are our retrieval options now? Well, firstly, we could snare it out. But, however, it would be likely to be challenging to cross with a snare through the side of the left main to circumflex stent struts into the LAD. And we need to consider that this is a recently implanted mid-LAD stent, which could be damaged or dislodged with a snare. 
Furthermore, the JLY tip is located very distally, and even if we did manage to get hold of it with a snare, it's unknown how the wire would behave when attracted given it's behind the left main stent. The other option would be to snare proximally. This also carries the risk of dislodgement of the fresh left main stent, and the degree of wire integrity between the visible tip and the guide is actually uncertain. But we decided that we'd have a last ditch attempt at taking a micro snare to mop up some of the stuff at the front end in the left main, but actually it didn't bring much material out. The other option that we thought was we could trap it out. So we could trap everything in the guide and take everything out, but then we'd lose all our wire and guide position. So before we do that and lose all our wire positions, we decided to optimize the distal left main bifurcation with kissing balloon inflations. We then used a trapping balloon in the guide to bring it all out, but that actually didn't bring much material. And, but what we didn't notice at this point in time is that the wire tip that was very distal has actually now come back much more proximally if you compare the two images on the screen. So now we have no guide, no interventional wires, a left major circumflex vent and a mid LED stent, but a stuck wire tip. And our options were now just left to stent the proximal LED and cover up whatever's left behind or try and retrieve a bit more. But if so, how? We made the decision to go with option two. Now that the fractured wire tip was clearly more mobile, we thought it would be worth making an attempt to remove it all via a snare. So how can we snare safely? We went back in with a seven French GB35 guide, rewired with a cyan blue in the LED, ensuring on Ibis that the wire is not abluminal at any stage. And then took a six French guidezilla over a balloon to go into it and through the side of the left main to circumflex stent into the LED so that the guide extension is now at the level of the wire tip. And we've simulated this on the right on a benchtop model as well, which you can hopefully appreciate the guide extension catheter moving forward. We then took the microcatheter that comes with the gooseneck snare down out of the guide extension catheter, as you can see on both the simulation and the angiogram. We then catch the tip of the wire through the uh, micro snare. And as we pull, the forces are applied around the tip of the guide extension and not then potentially shearing it around the left main stent and damaging this fresh stent. And you can see here, it all comes back in this absolutely wonderful moment after not many hours of fighting with this wire tip with the jailed wire involuting around the tip of the guide extension catheter. We hope that most of it is now gone, but Ivis shows one or two fil filaments hanging around. And so we complete an extended culotte to cover it from the proximal the LED back to the left main ostium. Sustained the proximal LED back to left main with a 4 by 28 synergy. Did a pot on the left main with a 4-5 NC balloon. Recrossed into the circumflex with a cyan blue. And opened the struts out of the circumflex with a 2 balloon. And then did kissing balloon inflations with a 4 uh, NC in the LED and a 3-5 in the circ. And so this was our final result in the LAD angiographically and also on IBIS, which we were really quite happy with and thought we were, it was quite a reasonable result from where we started. So what are my learning points from this case? Firstly, guide wire fracture is a rare complication. There are several risk factors, including tortuosity, calcification, forceful pulling of a wire and having jailed wires. It's important to be familiar with techniques to remove fractured guide wires, some of which I've illustrated in the case and also in the cartoons on the right. As was illustrated in this case, imaging is fundamental to understand what is happening and to tailor the technique that you use. And finally, in a complication, stay calm, think systematically through the options and use your colleagues to help you out, especially earlier in your career. Thank you. Uh, outstanding case and uh, very brave and uh, we congratulate you for the, such a uh, wonderful uh, success okay okay we move to the to the next one to the last one uh, about rotablation uh, opens the pathway to our provisional for alexandru Achim. may we have the the last 
Good afternoon. My name is Alexandru Akim. I'm a cardiologist from Cluj, Romania. And although I'm the last one to show you my case, I hope to catch your attention with, I would say, an interesting uh, left main bifurcation case, which actually we did together with Gabor Tot while he visited us back in the spring in Cluj. Mm -hmm. this, this case together with the doctors from there. Um, so the case is about a 73 years old female with the usual risk factors presenting to our service with severe unstable angina. I don't want to insist too much on the clinical data due to time, con time constraints, so I'm going to jump right into the moving scenes of the coronary angiography, where you can already appreciate the distal left main lesion. Um, I would say it looks like almost like a huge calcific nodule protruding inside the polygon of confluence, mostly onto the left main circumflex shoulder. The proximal LAD angiographically looks very calcific, but not very tight, tight. So I would say this is a Medina 101 lesion with a dominant circumflex and a huge left main um, caliber. From the cranial view, you can uh, see that there's an also a um, le lesion inside the mid LAD. And you, you can appreciate again the, the severe calcifications throughout the whole coronary system. So once again, the distal left main lesion, which actually it's like a calcific nodule, which is not very um, regular. It has also like a spike on top of it, which we predicted um, it will give us a hard time uh, at least to wire the circumflex, if not to keep this case to a provisional uh, strategy rather than going up front to a two stance strategy. So uh, back then we thought what to do with this case. Also, I don't want to talk too much about the indication. It, this case was refused by the surgeon. So we had to um, somehow to find a solution to, for the PCR. Should we rotablate up front? Can we do it only with the balloon? But if we do it with the balloons, we need a wire inside the circumflex. Can we put a wire inside the circumflex? Even if we put two wires and we start ballooning the bifurcation, we will have a huge plug shift toward the, 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 the circumflex. And is this a good idea? Can we stick to it with provision if, if we do such a huge plug shift? So in the end, we thought about going up front rotablation with the 1.5 per and somehow stick to the provisional uh, philosophy and strategy along the way and see if it's possible to finish with it. Uh, like we, we, we predicted, uh, we tried like 20 minutes to wire the circumflex. This, this was not possible. The operator tried various wires, various microcatheters, dual lumen microcatheter. It was not possible to wire the circumflex. The wire was always protruding inside the LED. So in the end, we put the rota wire inside the LED and we in our imagination, we thought about shaving at least the head of the nodule. And, and this way, maybe we make a bit of space. And uh, after this, uh, the wiring of the circumflex will become a bit more easy. Uh, unfortunately, this was right. Uh, so we uh, could wire the circumflex after doing rota towards the LED. This is like the final run of the rota, but I would, I must say this, it, this took like 10 slow good runs of rota until we obtain this result so we you really have to to have patient patience uh, if you want to rotablate such a huge nodule of calcium surprisingly this was the result after uh, doing all the rotablation towards the lad and towards the uh, left circumflex i would say this is a pretty good result uh, but of course you need to put uh, higher uh, balloons to make sure that the lesion is cracked and you can safely deploy a stand. Uh, but before that we, we used IVUS in order to assess the diameter of the left main and indeed the proximal diameter of the left main was 7 millimeters and looked rather healthy. So we thought about not covering the whole length of the left main because of its huge diameter, but um, try to stick to the disease part where the plaque was and somehow land intentionally inside the plaque or at least 
only a bit outside the, the plaque in order to not obtain a severe malaposition uh, in the proximal uh, left me. We did a pot with, with the biggest balloon we had on our shelf, which is a six millimeter balloon, which we uh, inflated it to a maximal high pressure in order to obtain even higher diameters to make sure that we obtain a malaposition as this is very important. We also did kissing and then repot. Fortunately, uh, we obtained an opposition at 6.3 millimeter, which we, which really is the it's maximum, it's the maximum diameter where you can overexpand your stand. You so this is the result after our pot kiss and repot, which um, angiographically and also on ivus looked very nice. Somehow the 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 calcific nodule almost melted, so. Uh, it disappeared, and this is the this is the benefit of rotablation, and not and not because of the ballooning. So this is our final result. We also stented the mid LED. So in conclusion, what rotablation allowed us, and what we learned from this case, is that re doing rotablation, uh, firstly, allowed us to do something very basic to wire the circumflex. It 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 was not possible to do it without shaving our nodule. Second, uh, it, it allowed us to keep our, uh, our uh, most diseased branch and as the main branch um, while doing our provisional technique along our, our PCI. Third, um, because we didn't balloon the bifurcation before doing the debulking, we did not have a huge plush, plug shift towards the circumflex where the most uh, where the nodule was sitting so potentially losing it and overstretching and dissecting the bifurcation so we really obtain a clean um, clean bifurcation by only doing the bulking with the rotablation in in the end of course uh, rotablation helped us to finish our strategy with just one stand, which is really great. In the end, uh, I want to thank you. And uh, this is how uh, Rotablation uh, opened and kept our pathway to our provisional technique. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, the, the presenter is not connected, so we have no question. We have to finish the, the, this interesting uh, session with the following conclusion. In case of a difficult side branch wiring, use all the, the classical technique, reshape the wire, use a double lumen catheter, use a dedicated a micro catheter with defectable tip. In the use of the jelly wire for, for only for complex bifurcation, that was one of the conclusions of, of the presentation of decision, will be discussed in our next uh, EBC consensus. I think it's a, a, an interesting finding, but the, it seems to be uh, discussed. Active protection of the Cybran seems to be more effective than the use of a simple jailed wire, but uh, complicate a little bit uh, the procedure. In case of a dissection of the Cybran, the YAP technique seems to be a useful technique, as uh, Dr. Kinoshita has shown. If you note some resistance, when you remove the, the jailed wire, you can use the sepal technique that probably avoid a complication in the left main, in the ostium of the vessel, or, or in the, the formation of the proximal stent. And finally, rupture of the jelly cybran is a very unfrequent complication, but be prepared to be treated with a microsne. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your, for your comment and, and have a, an excellent meeting.